What's good, YouTube? It's Jay here. Today, I just kind of want to talk about something that's been kind of on my mind a little bit about the whole gaming space, the gaming world, and, uh, well, things like Call of Duty, shooters, etc. Before we get started in this video, be sure to leave a like on the subs to the channel. I make basically any kind of real gaming content. I make a lot of our strategy game content, Yu Gi Oh content, vlogging content. I mean, the channel's pretty big on variety right now, so be sure to leave a sub on the channel if this video was entertaining to you. But one of the biggest subjects that's been kind of on my mind right lately has been the state of uh, gaming and Call of Duty specifically. So I've made this very clear on my channel. I'm a massive Call of Duty fan. I've always been a Call of Duty fan ever since Black Ops 2. That was my first real Call of Duty experience. Unfortunately, I didn't get to experience the glory of Modern Warfare 2. Uh, but, you know, I kind of got an idea of what a great Call of Duty game should feel like or what a good game should feel like. And honestly, looking at games now, looking at things like Modern Warfare 2019, Cold War, and the Vanguard, it's hard to... I, I wanted to go the typical route of saying that gaming has fallen off or Call, and Call of Duty has fallen off. I don't want to just jump on that typical, stereotypical route right off the rip without really giving uh, a little bit more definition as to what I mean by that. So, looking at things, let, let's start off with the Modern Warfare 2019, and then we'll get into things like Warzone and BRs and all that, because i got a lot on my mind about the whole gaming space right now. So, looking at games like Modern Warfare 2019, I'm looking back on that game, and honestly, I don't really think it was as bad as people made it out to be. Fundamentally, it didn't really function like, say, a Treyarch Kai, where you've got logical spawning systems and not a whole lot of BS that can just kill you from across the map and do a bunch of other crazy shenanigans like most of the Inf uh, Infinity War games. Uh, but that's just it. That game literally is an Infinity War game. Looking back on it, there's so much broken stuff in Modern Warfare 2019, but then looking at older games like Modern Warfare 2, Ghosts, uh, Modern Warfare Remastered. I've actually been playing a little bit of MW2 recently on the IW4X servers on uh, PC. And uh, looking back at those older games, and those games were probably just as equally as broken, full of bullshit spawns, insane hit registration, and a bunch of other weird issues. But the thing is, Back in the day, we kind of really didn't give a shit about that kind of stuff. We just had fun with the game no matter what was happening. We didn't think about any of that stuff. We didn't know about any of that stuff. Uh, you know, worrying about things like spawn logic and what's quote unquote broken and crazy and insane. All of that didn't really start happening until within the last, like, I want to say, I don't know, five, six years, maybe. You know, gaming has always had issues with balance in most video games for the most part, unless it's like a really competitive shooter like CSGO or something, and even then that game has had its own eras of broken guns. I'm looking at you, Aug. <laughs> but, um, I don't want to just say, like, modern games aren't what they used to be like, like when it comes to the classic games like Call of Duty, because I don't think that's entirely true, at least fundamentally in terms of the gameplay. You know, Treyarch CODs are always those really good, fundamentally well put together games. You know, Black Ops 1 through 4 and Cold War, in my opinion, are some of the best Call of Duty games ever, at least competitively because of how well they're put together. And then, you know, the Infinity War games are well. Infinity War games are chaotic, they're crazy, but they're phenomenal for things like content and making a bunch of fun videos or whatnot. People still make Modern Warfare 2019 videos, despite the fact we've had two Call of Duties released back to back after that game. Kind of goes to show you how a game that's really built towards more of a casual audience uh, is good for things like, well, content, I guess. But, all right, so I don't think Call of Duty has fundamentally changed that much. It just depends on the developer and what developer you really like. If you like the unbalanced, chaotic nature of Call of Duty, then Infinity Ward is probably the right team for you. If you like a more grounded and traditional, balanced, maybe-ish approach to Call of Duty, then Treyarch is probably who you're going to want to go for. And if you like a good jetpack game like Advanced Warfare, that's probably what you're going to go to Sledgehammer for. And that's pretty much the only really, you know, great game under their uh, portfolio. Um, okay, World War II wasn't the worst thing I've ever played, and I believe they also helped on Modern Warfare 3. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But, I think Call of Duty just really depends on the developer. But, uh, the, the fundamentals I don't think are what have necessarily made Call of Duty weird. I think it's really more or less this heavy focus on marketing all these crazy skins in the stores now, and all these things you could buy for COD points. All these crazy gun camos, all these crazy gun skins that can only apply to one gun. Like, it, it, it's insane to me that you could pay $24 for a skin or a custom version of a gun, and it's only applicable to that one gun. But if you change an attachment on that gun, well, it loses the cool skin that you literally just bought for it. 
And the only reason 9 times out of 10 you're changing the attachments on it is because most of the guns you buy from the COD store are garbage. They have terrible attachments, they don't play at a quote unquote competitive level, so to speak. I mean, though, you gotta remember, a lot of these guns transfer between Modern Warfare, Cold War, Vanguard, and then Warzone. Uh, it, it, it's just little things like that I think are kind of garbage, really. Back in the day, you know, you could buy DLC for Black Ops 2, and you would get multiple maps, a new gun, and then a bunch of new skins that were applicable to pretty much every gun in the game, and that's the kind of things that I've liked. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like weapon variants, I do think some of the things we've had in Black Ops 4, uh, Modern Warfare, Vanguard included, and Cold War, I think they've all had some really cool, unique skins that you can get from these COD stores, but... The, the paywalls behind them are just, I don't know, insane? <laughs> I'm not saying that we necessarily need to have a way to earn every single thing in these games now, but it'd be nice if they were a little bit more uh, universal. I don't know how they would really go about that, but if Call of Duty could go a more universal route with all of its, you know, uh, cosmetic items and whatnot, that would be really great. I would love that. I would love to be able to have a weapon skin that I just pay for. I don't mind paying for things, honestly. I wouldn't mind having a skin that I just pay for, though, that could be used across, you know, multiple guns. Now, I do think it's kind of cool that if you buy an operator in Vanguard, you can use it both in that game and in Warzone. Like, if you get an operator, you get to use it. But I kind of want to see that for more of the guns as well. Well, what's interesting is you can kind of miss mismatch, mismatch uh, different attachments for different blueprints of Call of Duty now with a with other blueprints. It, it, you can mix and match like that, but it still isn't really what I'm thinking about. I would love it if we could have more of a universal series of cosmetic items that you can pay for. Hopefully that didn't sound like a whole lot of nothing, but that's just one of the glaring issues I have with Call of Duty. I really wish that if you're going to pay for an item, you know, the fact that we can pay $24 for a unique gun camo, some skin, and some finisher moves, and maybe some calling cards you'll never use. It's just insane to me, man. Now, if the big streamers are doing it, I mean, they got millions to, you know, of disposable income they can throw away at this kind of stuff, and it's good for their content, having all these cool, expensive, uh, uh, skins and whatnot. But, hot damn, man, $24 to almost $30 for, for gun skins and operator skins like jeez louise man can we can we dial back on that a little bit it'd be kind of nice like i said i don't mind paying for skins but 24 dollars back in the day would get you 10 maps a new guns some new skins for your guns and and you could use that across the, the board you could pay 24 dollars now just for one gun custom one custom gun skin and you know an operator and maybe a couple of other extra little items on the side 24 dollars 20 dollars 24 dollars whatever the prices uh really really are i believe the highest i've seen is 24 dollars but uh, that's just one of the glaring problems with call of duty and you know uh, honestly, modern shooters as a whole, most games aren't really doing it like Call of Duty. I think Fortnite really kind of pushed heavy on the skins and whatnot from the, you know, cosmetic stores that you could buy them from and whatnot. I think Fortnite really uh, pushed that. But Call of Duty took it to a next level, man. Half of these skins are insane, the prices. That's just kind of one of the glaring issues I kind of have with Call of Duty. I did say FPS games as a whole. Um... So, uh, the, truthfully, this is really going to be mostly focused around Call of Duty, obviously, because that's one of my primary shooters that I play, um, but a lot of games are really having a bit of an issue with having to spend so much money outside of paying for the base game just to get cosmetic items. You know, Battlefront 2 had that issue. Fortnite, Valorant, Valorant is actually very reasonable with their prices, though, I'm pretty certain, and there's a lot you can actually earn in the game by playing it. So, Valorant gets a, they get a pass on this one. And again, Fortnite, you get to see your character skins because you're in a third person perspective. So you get to see that 10 to $20 skin that you pay for. That's also kind of acceptable. But in Call of Duty, I mean, you're dropping $24 for a skin you literally cannot see, which is just nuts to me. I used to think that paying 20 to $30 for a DLC pack was incredible back in the day. Like that's just way too expensive. $30 is so much for anything outside of just paying for the base game. And damn was I wrong. Moving past that, that's just one of many things that I think are a problem with uh, modern shooters and Call of Duty in specific. But the other one is everything is so heavily focused on battle royales now. And fundamentally, I kind of don't mind that. You know, I don't mind games that are their own battle royales. Like Fortnite is its own battle royale. Uh, you know, PUBG is its own. They didn't originate from an original multiplayer experience. 
that's what I'm missing. I'm even if the Call of Duty is broken. Uh, well, okay, I don't want it to. I don't want the next Call of Duty to be like Vanguard. For the love of God, please. Even if the Call of Duty isn't as balanced, say Cold War, or it's just as broken as say Modern Warfare 2019. At least you've got a, at least back in the day, you know, we could have a fun multiplayer experience. Multiplayer is so not fun anymore outside of maybe like Search and Destroy or something in Call of Duty games. From breaking up lobbies that, if you play back in the day, you know, you would argue with other players, talk some trash, say some insulting things. And, you know, granted, that was a more civilized age, if you ask me. Nowadays, everybody's sensitive. Uh, <laughs> but, um,. Back in the day, you would have those rivalries. You would make good friendship because the lobby stayed together. Nowadays, all the lobbies disband, and I'm tired of that, man. I really want to have these lobbies where if I talk some trash to somebody, that argument transitions into the next game and the next game and the next game, just like I did back in the day. Because that's just how it is. It builds community. It builds a rivalry. As toxic as people like to probably call it, that's what made gaming fun. Having people to interact with, to talk to, to yell at, etc. Back in the day, you have forced game chat in most Call of Duties. Nowadays, you know, everybody's on the hype of social anxiety and how afraid they are just to talk to everybody. And, you know, as a guy who's dealt with social anxiety, some things have ob honest, obviously just become a trend. You know, it's just fun to say I'm afraid to talk to people now or I hate talking to people. I hate people. I hate humanity, you know. Uh, I, I hate this era that we're in <laughs> with all of this kind of stuff. Granted, some people really do have it bad, and I'm not discrediting those people. Like, back in the day, people didn't give a shit about what you said, and I'm not saying that that's acceptable, just to be perfectly clear. But I do miss the forging rivalries you used to have with people back in the day. You talk some trash to one guy, he brought it over to the next game, the next game, you two just yelling at each other, going back and forth. I wouldn't say, too, you, it, like, incidences like this were a sign of respect for uh, each other necessarily but it was a sign of interaction people were interacting with each other and talking you know i just don't like that call of duty specifically has stepped away from that you know and that's just one of the problems man i miss just being forced to deal with the people that i started an argument with that made the games and the lobbies fun and well not boring it made them very interactive i've met some of my best friends from talking in Call of Duty game chat. And having all the lobbies to spend every single game just segregates everybody to only really play with their friends and only their friends. There's no interactions with your teammates, really, because your lobby is literally just banned. I can hop into Modern Warfare 2019 right now, like Team Deathmatch only, no other game types, because now, you know, we've got the whole playlist thing in Call of Duty, and the lobby still disband. I just hate that. It's not a bug, it's a feature. I wish that was gone. Secondly, as much as I do love Things like Warzone, and I actually really enjoyed the Fortnite era. I didn't play a whole lot of it, but I enjoyed the amount of uh, happiness it brought the world, so to speak, because I just love seeing people have something else to complain about or have fun with other than politics at the time. <laughs> Battle Royals have fundamentally kind of ruined Call of Duty, especially, especially Call of Duty. Other shooters, I guess, not so much. Uh, most, a lot of games are still trying to build that perfect VR. We've had so many VRs now. And, uh, you know, not a lot of games are really focusing on multiplayer experiences anymore. A lot of people don't have the attention span, I guess, for traditional multiplayer experiences. They're not as good for content as Battle Royales are, which I can kind of understand. But at the same time, man, I just wish we weren't getting so screwed on the multiplayer side of things, especially in Call of Duty. Call of Duty is literally just a gun leveling simulator for Warzone right now. So I'm hoping with Warzone 2, which is going to be its own standalone thing, we can kind of return to form with Call of Duty games. And, you know, the games are their own separate entities that aren't related to Warzone that heavily. I just don't like that when I hop in Vanguard, I, the first thing I'm thinking about is, okay, I got to level this gun with 70 levels, mind you, uh, all the way up just so I can have that one attachment to use in Warzone. I just don't like the fact that we're tied down to Warzone so much. I know this is starting to come off as a rant and it's getting a little long, so I'll try to keep the rest of my thoughts kind of short i didn't really have a concrete way i wanted to describe how i'm feeling about this but it's just things i'm kind of spitting off the top of my head if you feel what i mean so yeah i, that, I just miss the developers giving a damn about multiplayer and actually putting tour uh, effort towards a good experience vanguard is not a fun game and i hate ragging on developers because i used to be a coding major and a little bit of, i did a little bit of game dev and I understand it's shitty to have somebody say your game sucks after all the work you put into it. And you know, I'm not trashing on uh, Sledgehammer necessarily. 
they're dealt, they're they were kind of, they're always dealt a little any studio working under activision was kind of dealt a bad hand to be fair that's just a very rough company to work under but at the same time man hot damn that game is not not a very fun experience overall i've had my moments of bliss with it where i just completely turned my brain off but that's basically every game even when I, ho I hopped on Modern Warfare 2019 for the first time in a while, and this is kind of what the gameplay you're looking at right here is from uh, Modern Warfare 2019. I hopped on this game. It's not the best game in the world, not the best Call of Duty, but man, like, it was it was fun. I got shit on a lot in these lobbies because I haven't played in a long time, but it was fun. I had a lot of fun with it. Even when Warzone first dropped, I had a separate mindset for that, and so did a lot of my friends. We still loved hopping in pubs on Modern Warfare 2019 and just playing it. And that game is legitimately probably the most fun multiplayer experience I've had within the last three years, despite all my disagreements with it. Competitively, it's one of the worst Call of Duties of all time. The amount of content I had with friends, and that could have been because we were in lockdown when that game basically dropped. That could, have, that could be a reason. Uh, but the amount of uh, interactions I have with my friends in the game and the amount of content I kind of did, especially on the streaming side of things, was so fun. You know, I really miss that. I might just be on a nostalgia trip. I don't know, but I, I miss that a lot, man. Um, I want Call of Duty to be that fun. I want them to be that interactive. I I've met a lot of people through Call of Duty. Funny enough, I met a lot of people through Modern Warfare before Warzone even dropped because of uh, my willingness to well be interactive uh, in game chats and stuff. Still sucks that the lobbies just banned us. So I've missed a lot of friends probably that I could have made, <laughs> but the, the points that I'm trying to make, I think BRs have fundamentally ruined Call of Duty. I, I really can't wait to see if Warzone 2 is going to be its own standalone thing and we finally get some, you know, push towards making multiplayer a fun experience again. Because, man, like, people still love multiplayer. We shouldn't just throw it away for the biggest hype, you know? And that's just what's going to happen in the gaming world, unfortunately. I, I hate it, but it is what it is. And then this whole focus on microtransactions as once again in my opinion gotten out of hand we dealt with the loot box era for like three years now we're on the you could just pay thirty dollars for a skin era and that's probably easier than just dropping hundreds on loot crates hoping you get that skin that you want but shit's still overpriced in my opinion and i have the money to afford a lot of this stuff now but i don't want to spend thirty dollars on a skin twenty dollars on a skin it's just stupid to me i want to see call of duty return to its form this year especially with modern warfare 2022 modern warfare 2 whatever you're gonna call it you know hopefully it's gonna be a good game man because i really miss playing multiplayer with a lot of friends and having a good time on that i love warzone but we've had br hype for like five six years now i'm ready to move on from that and just have a different experience you know and honestly i could probably just do that i don't have to play brs if i don't want to obviously uh but the thing is a lot of my friends well they play a lot of the brs when it comes to call of duty because the last couple of cods have well been kind of meh for a lot of them next said modern warfare 2019 was a call of duty where we could hop in warzone but if we really wanted to play some multiplayer and just shoot the shit with each other we did that too cold war i had a lot of fun with personally because i'm more on the competitive side of things but a lot of my friends didn't like it because of it was too competitive and then vanguard i just don't have anybody that plays that game a lot of my diehard Call of Duty friends don't even like that game. They don't even own it. <laughs> so I, I don't know, man. I want to see Call of Duty return to form. I hope it does. And I hope we're able to have a good future with COD. I've been looking at a lot of the old uh, pieces of content for like Black Ops 2, MW2, you know, cyber montages, optic scump videos, a lot of old things from back in the day. And it's just crazy how much fun the games were back then. No, we're near as much skill based matchmaking. You know, you can kind of just do whatever you wanted. It was chaotic. It was good for content. I just miss those days, man. Like I said, a little bit of this is probably more emotional than it needs to be. I'm a little nostalgic for my older Call of Duties, uh, but I just want the next few Call of Duties to be good. Modern Warfare 2022 is going to be a two-year Call of Duty, the first one in like 10, 12 years or something. Uh, I want it to be good. I really want it to be good, man. I hope it's fun. I hope I get a lot of people uh, back into it, a lot of my friends, and I hope I'm able to make some good content. I'm not going to post this on J Games on. I still don't know how I feel about the channel. Considering that I've been posting pretty much anything I've won on this channel for the last couple of days, a little couple of weeks, I might just keep posting my Call of Duty content here. Who gives a shit anymore? You know, whatever. I'm going to have fun with this channel. It's my channel. I can post what I want. It is what it is. If it's 40 views or 1,000 views, I don't care. I'm just going to post it. Let me know what your thoughts are about this in the comment section down below. Do you miss older Call of Duties? Do you miss that fun you used to have when you hopped in a lobby with a bunch of people? I just don't feel like with the way that Call of Duties are designed nowadays, you can't really have the same amount of fun with people. You can't keep those rivalries going. All the skins are so expensive. Everything is focused on the Battle Royale. 
I think we need Call of Duty to make a change. Please. Please make a change. Thank you for watching, everybody. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Sub to the channel. Sorry for this long 20-minute rant, but I had a lot of my plate that I just kind of wanted to get out. And as always, I will see you in the next video.